All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we'll call to order the City of Murfreesboro Board of Zoning Appeals regular meeting uh, for August 24th, 2016. Uh, I've got an unusual circumstance, and there's a couple of meetings, and I believe Mr. Anthony will explain those circumstances for us. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to let you know that we'll have a special meeting at the conclusion of the regular meeting today. Uh, we had an applicant who gave us a late application, but they need action from this board before the September meeting. Um, as a matter of fairness, we charged them the fee for a special meeting, um, but we were able to go ahead and get the special meeting in today as opposed to having to uh, inconvenience people for a meeting next week or uh, something like that. So um, when the meeting concludes today, if we can adjourn and then just call the special meeting to order. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, next item is a consideration of minutes. Uh, we had two uh, two meetings uh, that had minutes included, uh, one from June 29th, uh, 2016, and then July 27th, 2016. Were there any changes necessary for those minutes? In the June minutes, it says that we approved March and April, and I just wanted to make sure that we've reviewed and approved May or whether that's an error that March and April were approved in June. I believe we did not have a meeting in, in May. May. Okay. I, I, I just saw that inconsistency <laughs> and wanted to. Any other changes? If not, those will stand approved. Um, next, we'll move to new business. Uh, our first application today under variance and special use permit request is application Z16053 by Jim Crumley of the City of Murfreesboro, uh, making the following request for property in the multifamily residential district located at 701 Bridge Avenue. Uh, this application has two components. The first is a special use permit to allow an institutional group assembly use uh, in the RM16 district. And the second component is a 30-foot variance from chart two of the zoning ordinance, which allows a maximum height of 35 feet for structures in the RM16 district. Uh, if you'd go over that for us, Mr. Anthony. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as you may know, the Franklin Heights public housing complex was recently closed, and that complex is presently vacant. Uh, this property is an 8.9 acre property, and it is zoned RM16, which is multifamily, 16 units per acre. Uh, the city wishes to use the property for a public safety training facility, which would serve both the fire and police departments. For zoning purposes, the training center is classified as both a public building and an institutional group assembly use. Uh, these uses are allowed in the RM16 district by special use permit. As noted in the staff report and shown on the site plan, the site would include construction of several new structures and the preservation of five existing structures. Uh, the new structures would include a main building with a training room, a vehicle storage building, a five-story uh, burn tower, an additional smaller burn building, uh, and a kitchen and restroom structure. Uh, also included on the site would be a canine training course and a uh, drive training pad. Uh, the city plans to install a 20-foot landscape buffer uh, with fencing between the subject property and the residential properties on Kinslow Avenue to the east. The proposed five-story tower exceeds the maximum building height limitation of 35 feet in the RM16 district by 30 feet, uh, necessitating a 30-foot height variance. Staff reviewed the request letter submitted by Mr. Crumley and noted that all of the general standards for special use permit and the specific standards for institutional group assembly use have been addressed. With regard to the variance, staff notes that there are few zoning districts that would allow a 65-foot uh, high tower by right. As shown on the site layout, the tower has been intentionally placed on a portion of the subject property that is at least by staff's estimation 400 feet from the nearest residential property. Uh, I know that both our fire chief and police chief have reached out to neighboring residents and other stakeholders to keep them informed about this project. Uh, additionally, the city hosted a neighborhood meeting on Monday night, uh, August 22nd, at the McFadden Community Center. Uh, the neighborhood meeting was very well attended by city staff. Uh, we had two BZA members, uh, two planning commissioners, altogether somewhere around 40 representatives from the city. We had, uh, I think, two citizens uh, show up as well. Um, the concern that was named by one of the citizens who I think may be here today uh, dealt with, with traffic. 
Uh, city staff is of the opinion that the proposed use would likely generate much less traffic uh, than a multifamily housing complex of more than 100 units. Uh, following the public hearing, the board will need to take two separate votes, the first for the special use permit and the second for the variance. Staff can answer any questions that you may have, and I would note that um, Mark Lee, uh, the project engineer from SEC, is here, Mr. Crumley is here, uh, and our fire and police chiefs are here as well, and they may wish to, uh, to speak or to add uh, onto this presentation as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any questions for staff at this point? If not, I guess we'll move on to the applicant. Anything you guys would like to present to us and add? Donald did an extraordinarily good job of uh, presenting the case. Uh, both, uh, we have both a new police chief and a fire chief since we were here 15 months ago to present this same project at a different location. Uh, if, if you would care to, I'd invite Chief Carl Durr and Chief Mark Folks up and just let them walk you through the site to kind of show you how it places on the ground. All of the elements that were present at the Coleman Farm site 15 months ago are on this site with the exception of the rifle range. Uh, so the, the basics for the need for the training facility has not changed. The elements of the training facility really have not changed. Just a different location, a different placement on the ground. <coughs> Good afternoon. Uh, Mark Folks, the fire and rescue chief uh, for the city of Murfreesboro. Um, no, no, chief Carl Durr with the Murfreesboro Police Department. And just a quick walk through the site, as, as you can see on the, on the application, um, the site has a, a training building which will have some administrative offices for our training staff, as well as training classrooms, indoor classrooms, um, not, un not unlike a school classroom that would be in that building up there. Um, the building that's the storage building will, will store things that we need for the training facility itself. So all the components of the training facility will be stored inside the, the things that we're using. Uh, either the cones for the driving pad or other things would be stored inside and not stored outside so it wouldn't impede the look of the neighborhood uh, or the area. We'll also store some apparatus there that will be utilized for the training facility as well as some police cars that would be used at the training facility themselves. Um, the drill tower, uh, it says a five-story burn tower. We're actually not going to burn in this tower at all. Uh, we're going to keep this to be a clean tower. It will have smoke only derived from a smoke machine um, that will be have PVC pipe running through the tower uh, in the different rooms to where we can put smoke into different rooms. But this smoke is hypoallergenic, it's non-toxic, and it, it literally is a smoke machine generated smoke. Uh, similar to what you would see in any kind of environment that uses smoke machines, even in indoor environments. Um, that, that building will be utilized for that. The, the two-story burn building will be used for live burn using Class A materials. Um, the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation is very strict, as well as National Fire Protection Association regulations on what we can burn uh, and what we're putting firefighters into in live burn situations. So we would adhere to all of those regulations. It'll be Class A materials, which is clean wood or wood products, <coughs> excuse me, that would be utilized in the facility. Uh, we would no, have no treated or painted materials that would be burned uh, in that facility um, for the most part whatsoever. The, the five buildings that we're utilizing that are there on Franklin Heights, uh, our departments have both, with the discretion of um, Murfreesboro Housing Authority, been utilizing some of the buildings in Franklin Heights in the meantime since the facility has been emptied out to conduct some training that we needed to conduct. Um, they have allowed us to do so on a temporary basis. That's where we kind of came up with the idea of acquiring the property from the housing authority and repurposing it into a training facility. But those five buildings make very good buildings for training. They're, they're concrete, concrete block and brick. Um, so they're essentially indestructible uh, even for firefighters and police officers. Um, but we're utilizing those buildings for search and rescue and other things um, from both agency standpoints that will be utilized there. And I'll, I'll let Chief Durr talk about kind of the streetscape that, is, that this offers for us as well and some of the driving pad components. Thank you. And the, uh, as Chief Folks uh, illustrated, the five buildings would uh, provide us a streetscape where we can conduct uh, felony car stops in different situations uh, for officers for training. 
Uh, it would also enable them to move inside the buildings where they could uh, use some munitions and, uh, and practice building entries uh, inside those buildings. And adjacent to that is also the uh, canine field. There are no kennels there. Uh, no dogs be kept overnight, but the canines can come in, park. Uh, all the structures that would be on that field would be uh, non-permanent you know, uh, for doing searches and uh, different uh, canine uh, detection methods. Uh, <clears throat> so that's, that's basically about it between fire and law enforcement uh, for our training. Uh, it really uh, would increase our capabilities, not only today, but into the future as we grow. The building directly adjacent to the, the K-9 is, is going to actually be a restroom for when we're out doing our outdoor facilities, um, practical uses for the drill towers. That way you don't have to go all the way back to the training building uh, and a small kitchen area for the outdoor classroom um, where we're doing that. Uh, as we mentioned in the application, we would limit nighttime activities um, to the restrictions in the application. Uh, we would do that through SOGs and both of our department are standard operating guidelines in both of our departments that would prohibit us from doing uh, any type of training after hours uh, that would be impactful to the neighborhood. And as you can see, we've pretty much designed the entire facility to be non-impact to the surround. The closest houses are on Kinslow Avenue. Uh, Chief Durr and I walked door to door among those houses and, and discussed this with the residents on Kinslow as well as the business owners along Bridge Avenue. Um, a couple of Mondays ago um, to discuss with the residents what we were trying to do and ask if they had any concerns about it. Welcome them to show up at the neighborhood meeting, uh, which none of the residents along Kinslow Avenue uh, came to the neighborhood meeting and they expressed their desire to us for the facility to be built. Uh, they had heard rumors that it was going to be repurposed into additional apartments or bought by someone and have additional apartments there. They also heard that the uh, some of the other industrial manufacturers may buy, purchase that property, and they stated to us that they would much rather have our facility there uh, in that neighborhood. Yeah, we, <clears throat> we were able to make contact with about 90% of the people that live there. Uh, there were a few tenants, but none of them expressed any concerns about this type of facility. In fact, most of them were relieved uh, that this was going to go back in there. Uh, the one question they had was uh, probably about, you know, a firearms <clears throat> range. And during then, we could hear the uh, firearms from uh, Rutherford County uh, range in the background. So, you know, we reassured them that we would be good neighbors. If there was any concerns they had in the future uh, with our operations, we would definitely be there to address them and, and talk with them one on one. Uh, since the neighborhood meeting, we had the neighborhood meeting on uh, Tuesday night, and at the neighborhood meeting, we had some concerns about traffic. Uh, we really do not feel like this is going to be impactful on traffic. Most of our training would be conducted in the 8.30 to 9 a.m. range as far as our personnel coming to the site to train uh, after we're getting our day started uh, at the fire department as well as at the police department. So they would be coming to site, doing the practical training, and then going back to the stations and the apparatus. Uh, we don't feel like it's going to be very impactful at all as far as traffic goes. It certainly will be less impactful than uh, 20 apartment buildings and the, and the residents, the number of residents and, and cars that would be created from that. Um, but as we have mentioned with every other um, person in the neighborhood if there are issues uh, you know we've asked people for issues and let us know their input beforehand but if there are issues chief during ourselves myself have made ourselves available and and told the residents if there are concerns please come to us and we'll make a resolution to resolve or try to attempt to resolve their issues that they have with the facility the, the city's transportation staff did come back after the monday evening uh, public meeting and pull up the three TDOT traffic counts closest to uh, the site. Uh, first site was Bridge Avenue in front of McFadden School. Second site was Main Street at the railroad crossing. Third site is the intersection of Bridge and Salem Highway. Uh, 15 years worth of data on the TDOT site. Surprisingly, there has not been a marked increase in traffic at any of those three counting stations Surprising again to us was that 2015 was not the highest year of traffic recorded at any of those three stations. Uh, we we kind of concluded with the bridge work going on at Broaden Memorial that people would be no, using Bridge Avenue and Main Street as cut throughs and the data is not showing that. So uh, again, no major increase in traffic at any of those three stations over the 15 year period of TDOT's measurements. Other questions we can try to answer? Mr. Crumlin, can you, uh, let's approach or uh, talk about 
So there's an eight foot chain link fence, right? That's around the property or will be around the property. At least that's what's shown on the design. We, we hadn't proposed chain link on the Ridge and Salem Avenue sides. What we're proposing is brick column with uh, metal bars in between, very similar to what's going up in front of the police headquarters on Highland Avenue. Okay, because uh, all chain the... link is around the industrial side okay. and around the back side of the property today. Okay, all right. And the other reason we didn't install an upper there was because of the existing building staying in play. There's really no water in the buffer in place, and, and you have an industrial manufacturer on the back side behind those buildings. And the 20 foot buffer initially. What will be, uh, what kind of landscaping will be planted there? I mean, it, are they trees that are already four feet tall? You, you see what I'm asking? What, what will, or is that buffer already there? The buffer does not exist on the bridge or Salem Highway side today. Uh, we need some sort of privacy inside. Uh, we, we realize that a lot of the activities that the public safety team will use in there. Uh, will cause folks to stop and look, so uh, the, the buffer will be as opaque as we can make it with landscaping materials. Okay. And that um, brick fence would go three quarters around where the green is on that on your map. Will you show us on on there where the chain we, link is we versus the, the same highway side and the projector side. Okay, and then chain link would go on the on the. There's existing chain link on the other two sides. Maybe some repair. There may be some areas we replace, but no substantial changes to that fence. But there's not room on the on the Kins Kinslow side to put. We actually we actually have proposed landscaping on the Kinslow side. The but, only place there is no landscape buffer. Is the existing where those buildings street are. opening on Kinslow and adjacent to the brick yard. But the chain link would remain next to that. Chain link will remain on that side. We don't intend to put the decorative fence on those two sides. I see. So you'll continue to have ingress and egress on Kinslow? I'm You're sorry. Continue to have there'll be ingress and egress on Kinslow? Uh, the the per no. current plan calls for landscaping on Kinslow Camp all the way to the edge of the buildings. But you uh, accessing some of the, <coughs> the facility from Ken, from uh, the side street. Actually, the, the Kinslow side would be just it would be gated, but a non-used gate, just emergency access if we were to need. Not um, a public thoroughfare. It's okay. not going to be a public thoroughfare or open at any time. And the, the front of the facility will also be gated. The facility will be secured when no one's there. Um, to ensure that no one gets on site uh, after hours. But for the most part, there's only going to be one entrance and exit onto Bridge Avenue. Yeah, that's correct. Did you say your for the dogs would be moved every night, or they're not going to just stay on the property? Yes, ma'am. There's no uh, kennels on site. So what, what will happen is the officers will transport their dogs in their cars. They normally do, and. Uh, what they'll do is they'll get out through their exercises training when that dog's done because you don't usually have two or three dogs on the course at the same time as they'll put the dog back into the car and then the next option will roll So there are no dogs being out there. Yeah. Okay. The police training um, activities that go on, um, again, no, there's not, a, not any sort of firing range. Are there any, any weapon or blanks or anything like that that needs to go off? That you use in that sort of training? Yeah, there's a, what we call is uh, simunitions, and it's a very small pop. Uh, they had, they, there was one done on Channel Four where they actually use Franklin lights in there, so uh, they're not very loud. But again, we wouldn't be uh, doing the simunitions at nighttime. This would be mostly a daytime activity, and uh, we might be we might use a building for some night entries and stuff like that. But we'll restrict simunitions so we're not disrupting the neighborhood. Would you expect that sort of activity if, if I'm a neighbor there that's on? Uh, that borders to it would that be the most disruptive activity that would happen you suspect or uh that or you know you, you might get a dog that barks or it, the uh, the other thing is you have the driving pad there so you might hear cars on the driving pad during the daytime okay i assume with the plans for 99 the right of way is across this 99 from this piece of property so if there's 
the, the State Route 99 right of way is already accounted for on our side of the street. Okay. Any further questions? Appreciate you guys' time. Thank you. At this time, we'll conduct a public hearing. Uh, if there's anyone present that wishes to speak for or against this application, if you would come forward, uh, state your name and address, and you can provide us any comments that you have. I guess I'm only dummy, I reckon, but I was up to meeting last time. Uh, what's the matter with the training facility that got out past Christiana? Sorry, I was could, told could you give us your name, please, and your address? I'm sorry. Kenneth Wayne Johnson, I live at 215 January Street. I've been there for 37 years. I've been in Westview 55 of my years. I've lived there. I know what's going on. I wake up every day and see traffic right there. You can't get out on January Street to Bridge Avenue to go to work. Janu uh, Bridge Avenue to Salem is constantly you can't get out there. From Thornton's all the way to 24, anytime in the morning time and evening time, it's blocked there. So how is this going to be a safe entrance for them to have one entrance to go in there? Yeah, they got lights they can turn them on and come out. You know, the other people live there don't have lights. The people on Kinslow, there's two owners over there. All the rest of them are renters. The renters don't care what you do over there, as long as you don't bother them. But it's unsafe. Over at McFadden School, in the evening time, you go by there, if you get out here at 3 o'clock today, you go over at 2.30, it's blocked from Kings Highway at McFadden School all the way to 099. If you turn right, the, the cars are blocked. If you turn left, the cars are blocked. So how can this be safe? I mean, I'm for them to have a place to train. But I was told at that meeting that they didn't want to go out of town to train. On that side of Christiana, ain't out of town. People go back and forth there every day to work. But I don't think it's a good place to be there. And he said they'd done a traffic count in 2015. I can't get out of my, of my road. So, you know, how many wrecks have they called back and checked on right there at 99 and Bridge Avenue? Or West Main at 99? How many wrecks have they checked on? Right there on West Main and Kings Highway. How many wrecks have they had here lately? It's constantly wrecks there all the time. And, but yet it ain't no traffic problem. I think the public is first, number one. I'm not gaining a thing by this other than I know they are gaining a good place. They don't have to go very far to do it. But then we'll talk about the gun situation. Well, we got an uh, army down at the sheriff's office. You know, I didn't have no say-so on that. But they claim you don't hear it. I hear it all night long sometimes. And I know they got a train, and I know they need a place to be there. But um, I just think you need to do a traffic count. And most of the old people on my street, they ain't able to come sit and endorse their opinion. Now, he said he went to door to door to talk to people. They want to come to my door, and I'm less than 250 feet from them. But nobody come to my door and told me, I got this in the letter, in the mail. If I didn't get it, I wouldn't ever know about it. But yet we run all them old people out of these houses. And we want to put a fire training center there. I mean, they moved them out to up front. They're going to rebuild them first. And I told them, this is the words out of my mouth. I said, they told you to lie if they said they're going to rebuild them. I said, that property's too valuable to rebuild them and put you over. And then they started moving them all out. And it's real bad when you take our elderly people that's been there for 40 years, put them out, displace them. I know they helped them find a place. But yet we won't put this over. It's just not right. And the traffic is my number one concern. I see it every day. I don't come over every once now since once in a while. I see it every morning, every evening, and at five o'clock I can't go nowhere. It's terrible. We need to take care of the traffic and the public first. These guys got a nice place out there to train out there off Christiana. I think it's decent. What we're gonna do? Is let it go to ground? I mean, we don't have to go that far. Like I said, people drive back and forth every day to Christiana. There's not that much out of their way to go over and train. And I told them we're going to lower lane. Of course, one of the guys said it's, they tried to get that piece of property. It's too high. Out there at Miss Beasley property, over 24. That's the best place to put it because you got access right there for anybody. But they said it was too high. But yet we're going to take the city's property and run these old people out and put something like this in there. It's not right. And the traffic needs to be took care of first. And like I said, I've been in my house for 37 years. I lived in West. I would, they told me I lived in the projects when I was born, but that's just hearsay. <laughs> My sister's in Sydney. But I've always lived over for 55 years. I know what's going on. Like I said, I know they need a good, safe place to train. 
But you ought to go over and sleep in my bed one night when they're doing them shooting guns out there at the sheriff's office. That's enough to drive you crazy. But I know they got a train. But they need to take the safety of the, of the people first and do a camp right there where their interest is is less than 100 foot from the red light. When people turn right right there at the red light, they don't stop. But yet they got one interest going into the pub, to housing authority. You know, it's, I don't see where they're going to gang by it and have a nice facilities over there, which ain't, everybody loves nice new facilities and close ones, but they need to put the public first. And that's basically what I'm told in the verse. But I told them I was probably the only dumb area, but I'm going to voice my opinion. But like I said, I've been there for 36, 37 years at this 215, and I know what goes on over there. And I appreciate your time. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Is anyone else present wishing to speak for or against this application? Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for further questions or motion. With respect to his question, his comments and questions, one thing um, I would ask likewise, given the design with the entrance from 99 off a of bridge where it is, uh, was there any more thought about the fact that having it further away from 99 might alleviate a little more uh, 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 flow, uh, would might improve the flow coming in and out and not affecting traffic? Yes, sir, we, we looked at the site and, and it's really difficult to lay out that in, in an attempt to keep the drill tower and the things that are making the most noise away from Kinslow Avenue and the other neighbors. It was very difficult to locate a 300 by 300 driving pad. Um, and then another reason that we kind of kept the roadway exactly where it's at, it's that roadway exists currently, and that's the entrance and right. exit of Franklin Heights. Uh, it, the infrastructure is already there for the roadway. The, the hydrants, uh, utility lines are already running along that route. And to relocate a lot of those things and, and that roadbed would be an incredible amount of, of money to relocate that. I have, I have myself visited this site dozens of times while our firefighters are doing training um, and while we've been overlooking at the site different things about the site to consider for this training facility. I have never had an issue turning left or right coming out of that facility during the daytime hours. You, you do have an increased traffic flow during school hours uh, in the early morning and then mid-afternoon. Those are times that we're very, we are going to have very, very little impact on this site as far as traffic in and out of the facility because they will either already be there training and still there training while school's being let out or they likely will not have gotten there yet uh, when school's going in session. They will not have proceeded to the training facility uh, at that point in time. So we have addressed it. We have looked at it multiple times a day that we've been there and have not had any issues getting our apparatus in or out of the facility with the current roadway exactly where it's at. And the other thing I wanted to address because it was a concern uh, that he stated about the, the training facility um, in Deason um, at the, uh, in Bell Buckle, the State Fire Academy. That is a state fire academy and it's utilized by departments all over the state. They, they typically do a lot of training with the uh, rookie school and, and other officer level training. Um, ISO requires us to have 18 hours of training per person or per firefighter per year at a training facility and it has specific requirements on it has to be at least two acres has to have a drill tower of at least three stories there's several other things that are required in the iso requirements for our firefighters to to meet that facility requirement this facility meets that requirement it would with a 40 you know 35 to 40 minute drive uh, to bell buckle the state fire academy and the scheduling issues it would be essentially impossible for us to get 199 certified personnel for 18 hours a year uh, to the State Fire Academy in an effective manner. That's the reason that we need this facility. Additionally, operationally and safety-wise, um, we need the enhanced training that this type of facility offers us here to be able to conduct more of that training, even so than the 18 hours uh, per person per year. And that's the reason we want to locate the site in Murfreesboro uh, to where we have a, the ability to send our apparatus on duty to that site on a daily basis. Thank you. <laughs> 
how many residents um, lived at this facility when it was, I guess, a going concern? Um, I checked on that the other day, and it was got that between 450 and 500, and I think it was 106 or 108 units. Way more than I thought, 151. Okay. Thank you. Uh, certainly, to, to just in my thoughts, the traffic certainly concern any time you're dealing with a facility like this. But I, I think as far as this uh, site's impact, I feel like it's going to be less ins and outs and traffic than 151 unit uh, residential facility. Um, I would concur and uh, sensitive to the gentleman's uh, point, but when you think of the different types of impact, uh, the highest and best use of, of a commercial activity is going to provide much more traffic. It being uh, the multi-residential that it was, this would be much more traffic impact than this proposal would stand. So I would think that, that the gentleman might see that uh, the traffic impact is going to be improved instead of worsened. So. I think that uh, after our other exercise with respect to the other location and the thought process that has been put into this in reference to layout, the eliminating of the outdoor fire range, which was a huge issue uh, with the last site. Uh, I know Mr. Johnson and I understand his concern over the traffic. I think we've all mentioned that I don't think this is going to exasperate it any based upon the time frame that um, that y'all are going to be utilizing the facility. You're not going to make it better. I don't, I, well, I mean, it, it could be better based upon the number of uh, vehicles in and out of the facility. It definitely is going to, would be better uh, than if this uh, was sold to a developer and was uh, developed on a multifamily basis. Uh, um, and so I, I'm, uh, I was not for the other site. Uh, I am for this site. I'm going to make a motion that we approve. I approve in the first. Uh, in reference to the special use motion permit. Motion to approve the special use permit. Yeah. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion on that? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? There are none. So that special use permit has been approved. Uh, next, any discussion on the, the height variance? If there's no discussion, I'll make a motion to approve the height variance. Of second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on that component? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none. All right, that application has been approved. Um, Next, we'll move to special use permits. Uh, the first one is application Z16054 by Monica Robertson, uh, requesting a special, special use permit to allow a home occupation, a counseling office, on property in the single family residential district located at 2410 Ravenwood Drive. Mr. Anthony, if you'd review that for us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the applicant, Monica Robertson, wishes to continue operating a counseling office in her home at 2410 Ravenwood Drive, which is in the Ravenwood subdivision. Uh, the subject property uh, includes approximately 16,000 square feet, and it is zoned RS-15 for single-family use. Chart 1 of the zoning ordinance allows home occupations by special use permit. As the materials included in your packet indicate, uh, Ms. Robertson initially planned to, co to construct a standalone office behind her home. However, uh, upon closer review of the Ravenwood subdivision plat, uh, staff discovered a 15-foot public utility and drainage easement along her rear property line, which interfered with her construction plans. We still included those in your packet um, because we didn't know at the time that that easement was there. So you can disregard uh, the sketch of the, uh, of the new structure. Uh, so instead of constructing a, a new building, Ms. Robertson wishes to continue operating the counseling office uh, out of her house. In her request letter, Ms. Robertson indicates that she may include group instruction. Uh, if the board grants the special use permit, it should also indicate whether group instruction is to be allowed and what, if any, parameters would be placed uh, on group instruction. 
Uh, as discussed in the staff report, between the loop drive in front of the house and the large parking pad on the southeast side of the house, it appears that Ms. Robertson has sufficient space to accommodate uh, up to nine vehicles. Ms. Robertson has indicated that the home occupation will satisfy the general standards for special use permit, as well as the specific standards for home occupations. Um, staff would like to add a condition uh, that was not included on the staff report. Uh, the applicant shall provide a site layout showing the actual location of the counseling office within the house. Uh, that's something you can provide to us after the, um, within the next few days. Uh, and staff can answer any questions uh, that the board may have. Any questions for staff at this point? Oh. In, in looking at the number of people that would be allowed um, at a group uh, visitation or, or session, um, I'm just in my mind, I'm comparing that to in, uh, in home daycares uh, in reference to having a number of people at, at one time. Um, with in home daycares, is the, the state's the one that dictates the number of kids that can be there at one time. Is that a square footage issue or what? How is that? Just out of curiosity. I, I don't believe there's okay. any square footage attachment to it. I think okay. it's, it's just based on how they classify. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. I'm sorry, how many at a time did, did she, was she expecting? Did she have a number? I, I, I don't believe she provided a okay. number. Do you? Okay. Okay. Uh, anything else for staff at this point? Well, uh, Ms. Robertson, anything you'd like to add to the application for us? Okay. Uh, at this time, we'll conduct a public hearing. Is there anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application? If you would, come forward. Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for further comments or a motion. Ms. Robertson, could you share with us the time frame that is so that if we were to approve a group instruction that we would be able to have an understanding of when you, you mentioned that eight people would be the maximum, but do you have a hours of operation? When, when would you be asking for us to approve any group instruction times? The latest time that anyone would be in my home for that particular thing would be eight o'clock at night. And when would that begin? Um, probably by the first of next year before group it's a time a time during the day monday through friday saturday monday and through, sunday monday through saturday right now i mean outside of my business i host the riverdale rugby girls rugby team at my home to watch games and um and then my foster daughter has a small group from oakland high school that comes but that's just us personally as far as the business is concerned um, groups would probably be more than likely on a Saturday. Um, it'd probably be toward the weekend and not during the week. Well, when would you like us to? I, I don't. I don't. It, unless is there something in the materials that asks for a specified time? What are I you think asking? There was, I for think us there to was approve? something in your material that said if uh, if a business wanted to host a group that you had the option to set the maximum number of people who could participate at one given time. Well, typically right. when businesses are approved, we also set time frames. Is that incorrect? No, you, you absolutely uh, can do that if you so choose. And so I was asking, my what business time? hours are between 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. And that's Monday through Friday? Monday, Monday through Saturday. Saturday. How many, uh, what's the average number of sessions you would have in any one day? I've been, I've seen people from my church for 2007 to 2014. 2014 was when my nonprofit was established. I've been extremely part-time since then because I'm still in school. Um, 
once I get a full load for me with all the people that I take care of. Otherwise, I would say 25 max a week. A week, okay. Yeah. What about the parking? Those people, do they have enough room to park in your driveway? Or? Mm -hmm. There's a, we put a circular drive in for that purpose. We have a large area in the back of our home where people can park. Um, we've, we've worked around that pretty well. We don't have any complaints from the neighbors. I actually see my neighbors for counseling at times, and so we've got a great neighborhood. Yeah. And we have two police officers that live on our street, so um, we all kind of look out for each other and make sure everybody's parking in the direction they're supposed to park if they're in front of the home or whatever. So no complaints so far. Thank you. Any further questions? Thank you. Did I have, I have the public hearing? We haven't had it yet. I have not had it. Oh, I'm sorry. Or we did have it. Okay. I thought so. Okay. Yeah. I thought so. Okay. Throwing me off track. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Any further questions or? Oh. So staff is suggesting that she provide, with approval, that she provide an actual layout for the office since she's taken the other addition off the, off the board. Right. One of the one of the standards for home occupations is that it can't occupy more than a quarter of your of your house, and so we just need her to designate on even this aerial photo, just the portion of her house uh, where the business is occurring. How, I'm sorry. How how would we be able to approve if we don't know that it's? Uh, well, be, because it, it's it's a standard. Um, so unless you're going to make an exception to the standard, she'll be required to adhere to that 25 percent. So, so if maximum. if after providing the layout, if her home does not, if the provision, if the space exceeds 25 percent, mm -hmm. she'll either need to come back to us or it would not be approved. Absolutely, that's right. Okay. That uh, that would also apply to the sign ordinance or, or sign condition that she mentioned a sign. So uh, I mean, uh, compliance. Yeah, I think on a home occupation, you can have a three square foot sign, and and that's it. Um, anything beyond that, she would need to talk with our sign administrator and figure out a, what, if any, process there is for um, appealing or altering that. I would make a motion to approve the request, subject to meeting the other staff conditions that were outlined. A second. Got a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Um, is there a second? Would there be a second motion with regard to group instruction, or does this motion include group instruction? How do what we do you think, David? Should, should they get it all in at one time, or do a separate? Well, if she's requested, that the request is one motion then are we are approving? Yeah, exactly. does, does this motion include? I assume that it that it also took in since the count. It's a counseling office that it took in group sessions. But I, I didn't. I mean, I, you know, the motion wasn't any comment on as far as the operating hours, and I, I guess that would be something that would need to be taken up as well. Yeah, you may want to... Um, Let me withdraw that motion. Okay. <laughs> you, you may want to, in the motion, set uh, set a number of people who can be present at one time um, and then the hours uh, at which group instruction can occur. How is it enforced? I mean, to that be is honest a, with you. I mean, yeah, I, um, I think things like that are typically complaint based so if um, someone called the the police um, or something like that or if someone called and made a, a zoning we, we do get calls in our office for zoning violations we have a gentleman in our office who goes out and checks those out as well um, so a, a couple of different enforcement avenues okay through through zoning or through the police with that with that said, then I would I would move to approve the request subject to meeting the staff conditions 
that the operating hours be uh, from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, Monday through Saturday and with a maximum of uh, 12 people uh, in a group. 12. Oh, 12. eight. She said eight, but I was being a little more lenient, I suppose. Thank you. I mean, I've had church groups in my house, small groups in my house of 18, 20 people, you know, and that's not, I don't think that's the bad. <clears throat> the only issue I have with uh, and I think it's great that she's put the circular drive. I think anytime someone is putting a business in their home, we shouldn't impact the um, streetscape in any way. Mm. Um, so I, I think we need to limit the number of people that I get that you're going to have church groups and the Riverdale rugby team or whoever. I mean, I, that happens at my house also. But when we're talking about a business in a home, I think we don't need to get to the point where we're uh, having uh, street on street parking to accommodate the number of people that would be coming to the house as, as part of the business. So, I, I mean, I, if you would amend it to eight, I'd be willing to move forward. If not, I'll vote against it. So moved. All right. I'll second Tim's motion. Okay. And I, I, one more comment. Um, any other time, I don't know that we've ever approved till 8 o'clock on any in-home business. The only reason why I, I would even go this is it sounds like you've, you've been operating this business. That, uh, there's nobody here that uh, openly said that they're in opposition, uh, and I'm assuming there was no phone calls no. with respect to that. So uh, based upon that, it sounds like you're operating it in a fashion that you're not impacting your neighbors or they would hear about it or somebody in your neighborhood would be, uh, you know, against it. So uh, I just don't want us setting a precedent that we're going to have these in-home businesses open to 8 o'clock when somebody else comes up here and wants to put a hairdressing facility in their home and stuff like that. But I, I just I kind of wanted that statement in. Uh, on a on a public basis. Good point. I, 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 admittedly, this is new to me. I've only been sure here a couple of meetings, so uh, I'm not fully aware of that. Those types of uh, precedents. Each of each of these sorts of things are kind of a case by case and on its own merit. So it's you know kind of have some guidelines, but then there's also some circumstances that allow for some variance from one to the other. So. Uh, we have a motion and a second, I believe. Are there any, any further discussion? Uh, if not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, there are none. That application has been approved. Next, we'll move to application Z16055 by Sharon White, requesting a special use permit to allow an accessory apartment on property in the single-family residential district located at 951 Esquire Court. Mr. Anthony, if you re review that for us. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The applicant, Sharon White, wishes to construct an accessory apartment behind her existing house at 951 Esquire Court in the Meadowood subdivision. Subject property includes approximately 17,000 square feet, and it is zoned RS-15. Uh, as shown on the plot plan, the applicant intends to construct a 500-square-foot detached accessory apartment. As noted in the staff report, the sketch provided by the applicant does not indicate building materials or colors. Uh, staff recommends that the applicant choose materials and colors that complement the existing house and the overall character of the neighborhood. If the board approves the special use permit application, staff recommends that the board include the following condition. The applicant shall complete the restriction on, land, on use of land document provide by the city, provided by the city attorney and shall comply with all notarization and recording requirements as determined by the city attorney. Staff can answer any questions that you may have. Any questions at this point? Uh, anything the applicant would like to add at this point? All right, at this time we'll conduct a public hearing. Is there anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application? If you'd come forward, please. 
seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for further discussions or a motion. No further questions. I'll make a motion to approve the application with the conditions set by the staff. A second. Have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion on that? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? There are none. That's been approved. Next, we'll move to application Z16056 by Clyde Roundtree of Huddleston Steel Engineering, representing Mary Reed. They're requesting a special use permit to allow a self-service storage facility on property in Commercial Fringe District located along the east side of Veterans Parkway, south of Cloister Drive. You'd review that for us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the applicant, uh, Mary Reed, wishes to construct a self-service storage facility on property located along the east side of Veterans Parkway, south of the Cloister subdivision. This property was recently annexed into the city and zoned uh, commercial fringe. The applicant plans to construct an office and commercial complex on the west side of the property near the Veterans Parkway frontage and a self-service storage facility on the eastern or rear portion of the property. Uh, the office and commercial complex is allowed by right and does not require any BZA action. However, the proposed self-service storage facility does require a special use permit. Uh, the applicant has provided a site sketch which shows the location of the proposed facility. Uh, the facility would consist of nine buildings per the sketch um, and would include some climate controlled storage as well. Uh, as shown on the site sketch, a 15-foot Type D landscape buffer and a 6-foot high opaque fence uh, would be installed along the northern property line between the subject property uh, and the neighboring cloister subdivision. Additionally, in order to provide uh, an additional measure of privacy to residents in the cloister, uh, no driveway will be constructed on the northern side of the subject property. Uh, the applicant's request letter indicates that all general standards for special use permits and specific standards for self-service storage facilities uh, will be met, and staff can answer any questions that you may have. Any questions for staff at this point? If not, is there anything that the applicant would like to add at this point? Steel Engineering. Uh, all I want to add is Mr. Anthony asked me to provide some photography of just some images from buildings that Mr. Reed has constructed in the past so you get a level of quality of the character of the buildings that he's been a part of. So I'll hand that to you. Thank you. And Mr. Chairman, I failed to mention that, that we did receive an email earlier today uh, from a concerned citizen, and I have included that um, okay. for you today. Thank you, sir. And I'm also available for any questions you may have in the process. Okay. So these, these photos are for the front section, the west side of the property? There's actually one that shows a mini storage, uh, kind of a facade as well. But really the key is it's a high quality building, masonry products, um, nice architectural character. And because it's a mixed use, you know, with the retail and commercial on the front end and the storage on the back end, the only thing that's probably of note is that the office for the storage facility will be on the front end as part of the retail section. And then, um, or the commercial section will be in that building. So, so any clients who are using the storage will drive to the back of the facility. And will the storage portion be fenced? It is fenced. As I've glanced over the, I guess the email we received, there mentions water issues, water runoff. Is there? I guess that's probably dealt with later on down the line. And, and that's, that, I would say that the issues they had that they identified were stormwater drainage, lighting, architectural character of buildings, all that will be addressed in site plan. Um, they also asked about the staging of the construction phasing. Mr. Reed is going to, as is typical, get the buildings process started. As there's, as there's a need, they'll continue to build more uh, buildings. 
We do believe that on the uh, site planning process, there'll be architectural renderings that'll accompany the buildings, and there'll be some height identified. They're concerned about the height, making sure that you know the buildings weren't you know along the property line a certain height. They they try to identify that because they don't know what those building heights are. So a lot of the questions they had were specifically related to what would be covered in site planning with staff review. Um, okay. So I feel like we've, we've, we met with them. We already had a neighborhood meeting with them. So those issues were already identified as okay. well. So I feel like there's uh, some safeguards for them. Do you agree, Donald, that, that our site plan process will cover a lot of the concerns that they expressed in the letter? They should, yes, yes. All right. Anything else for the applicant? They did quote me in the, in the uh, email, so I just want to clarify that. They said, uh, as far as the phasing of the construction, they said it would be whenever they had their first child. <laughs> and I just want to say, I, I, I don't remember stating that. Um, so that the, all they had the option of not having children, it's never get done. But, but the fact is, is that they are concerned about making sure, you know, they're just doing safeguard for their property. They're sure. against the property line. They're in the back corner of their subdivision. I don't feel like there will be a major impact of their house, particularly on the way they're angled. But it was one of those things that came up that I just want to bring clarification in. Okay. Thank you. At this time, we'll conduct a public hearing. Uh, is there anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application? If you would, come forward. Uh, seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for further discussion or a motion. Just so I understand, they haven't brought anything before the Planning Commission to approve this project? Is the the yes specific no. project, no. They've come to the Planning Commission for annexation and rezoning, but not for the specific project. Okay. So they would address, have to address all these issues yes. before getting approval. Yes. We're just, we're just, our action here before us is just to allow a special use for this type of facility in that CF district. Correct. Thank you. And it's only limited to the self-storage facility, correct? Correct, yeah, it's just that rear rear portion of property. I know I've said this before, um, I don't know, you know, and I guess the reason why uh, many warehouses have to have a special use permit is based upon the look of the traditional mini warehouse 20 years ago. But I will say that some of the mini warehouses that have been developed in the last 10 years are nicer than most, or not most, but are nicer than some commercial buildings that we've got around town. So I don't know, is there a thought process that these will still have to have a special use permit going Forward or I, I remember our last discussion yeah. about this a few months ago, and I, I did raise to to the planning director the idea of looking into. Um, right now, they're only allowed by right in heavy industrial, okay. and everywhere else that they're allowed, it's by special use permit. Okay. And so I have talked with him about possibly looking into light industrial and at least highway commercial, if not commercial fringe. Um, if if they're going to meet the architectural standards yeah. and satisfy the other conditions associated with it, um, maybe. Maybe this process isn't necessary for certain, for some of them. Right. So we'll continue to have those discussions. Okay. And one of the comments in this letter, they talk about, and I guess this would be true of any mini warehouses. If somebody's, you know, it's not manned 24 hours, so if the band chooses to go there and do their thing, uh, I mean, I'm sure she could call the police and. Uh, take care of that at that point in time. That's so. right. The, the police would be the appropriate action. And I, I would also point out, um, certainly when you approve a special use permit, you're approving it for, for the rest of time. Um, but uh, Mr. Reed has, has developed these in the past. He, he, has, he will set certain standards. He's agreed to that uh, in the neighborhood meeting, um, certain standards as far as um, hours of operation and ensuring that nobody's living in units, which our ordinance requires, and that there's not excessive noise, um, that kind of thing. Uh, he, uh, I think, has definitely presented himself as a, as a very good landlord. We made a motion. I can't remember. Uh, I'll make a motion, motion that we approve subject to all staff comments. Second. All right. have a motion and a second. Are there any further discussion? 
If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? There are none. That application has been approved. Uh, our next item is staff reports and other business for this meeting. Anything to add there? <laughs> I'm going to save all mine for the end of the next meeting. Okay. All right, so our regular meeting will now be adjourned. Stay tuned for part two. <laughs> Bang that twice. Let's see. All right. Uh, I guess we'll slide right in to we'll call to order the special meeting of the City of Murfreesboro Board of Zoning Appeals for August 24, 2016. Uh, we have one item of new business. Uh, it's a variance request. That's application Z16057 by Lori Raines representing Sonic Restaurant. Uh, they're requesting the following variances for property in the Highway Commercial District located at 1129 Fortress Boulevard. Uh, there's, this application has three components. Uh, the first is a variance from the Murfreesboro Noise Control Ordinance, which prohibit the use of sound amplification devices in such a manner as to be plainly audible across a real property boundary of the nearest occupied dwelling or in a noise sensitive zone between the hours of 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. Uh, component number two is a variance from the noise control ordinance which limits sound levels in residential and commercial zones. And the third component is a variance from the noise ordinance which prohibits the use of sound amplification devices in such a manner so as to be plainly audible at a distance of 50 feet on a public right of way. If you will go over this one for us, Mr. Anthony. All right. It's my first time with the noise ordinance, so this will be <laughs> this will be exciting. And I've already chastised Mr. Deeds for not bringing ice cream for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> the applicant wishes to host a special event, uh, including outdoor sand, sound amplification at the Sonic Restaurant located at 1129 Fortress Boulevard. Uh, the special event, scheduled for September 18th and 19th, will include a live radio broadcast, uh, which will be amplified for event attendees. Uh, as shown on aerial photography, the subject property is located in close proximity to the Bell Murfreesboro apartment complex. And that leads into an email that I received um, from... Uh, the applicant's representative a couple of days ago, and I just want to read through that because it affects, um, it actually affects the request itself. Um, so the applicant's representative says, I just want to clarify a few things prior to Wednesday's meeting. Uh, we have decided that we want to drop variance request number one, time of operation. We will adhere to the set daytime hours of 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, so the proposed times for this event are now 7 a.m. Uh, to 7 p.m. on September 18th and 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. on September 19th. Uh, in the clarification email that we received earlier this week, the applicant's representative also indicated that decibel levels will reach 75, uh, which exceeds the limit of 50 allowed by the noise control ordinance. Uh, so the applicant will need the variance from Table 2, uh, which sets the 50 decibel limit. Uh, additionally, because of the site's proximity to Fortress Boulevard, the amplified sound is likely to be plainly audible from the public right-of-way, necessitating a variance from Section 21-108A1D of the Noise Control Ordinance. Uh, planning staff's only real concern with uh, the event is the start time, particularly on Sunday morning, uh, September 18th. Um, staff appreciates the applicant delaying the start from 6 to 7. Um, but we're of the opinion that seven may be a little bit early still to begin the outdoor sound amplification. Um, if the board thinks similarly, then staff recommends the board consider setting uh, maybe a slightly later start time. Uh, staff can make every attempt in the world to answer any questions uh, that you may have. And additionally, got anything? Did I do okay? You think? It, uh, awesome. Okay. Uh, but police who are responsible for carrying out this uh, ordinance in the in the end uh, are here as well. Thanks. So basically request number one has been withdrawn. Correct. So you, you're, you're just considering two and three um, at this point. In reading over the ordinance, is what their time periods that the ordinance addressed? Uh, I vaguely recollect I want to make sure I'm uh, 
let's see, where did I see the daytime? Oh, okay, maybe it's just defining daytime or nighttime. Okay, that may be what I'm looking at and not so much when you can make noise. What's the event as some sort of promotional event for Sonic? It is. Um, they're doing, uh, does anybody want to talk about that? What? Why don't you come up? Yeah, that would be great. If you wouldn't mind okay. come up and get, kind of tell us what you're, <laughs> what you're planning. Uh, I'm Bobby Arnold. I'm one of the supervisors for Sonic and one supervisor one on Fortress. And what it is, every year we have a, we, we compete in games throughout the year with Dr. Pepper. And out of 3,700 Sonics in the United States, like 3,400 of us compete. And it narrows down throughout the year, and then we get down to the top 12 teams. Well, the tw top 12 teams get to go to our convention, which this year is in Nashville. And the 12 teams will go to that city where the game, where the convention is held, and they will, prior to the convention, they will have competition, those 12 teams. And then that's how we pick the gold medals, the, the silver, the bronze, kind of like the Olympics deal. Competition in what? And yeah, we, that's a good question. Well, what sort of competition? It's a, the, every, they will com compete against the best grill person, the best uh, speaker person, the best car hop, uh, the best drink maker, and then they will do a team competition to where the whole team, who does the best team. And that will go on for two days. That will go on Sunday and then Monday half the day till 3.30 in the afternoon. And then during our convention at, in Nashville, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, on Wednesday they will hand out, they will announce the winners and hand out the medals. It's a real big experience. Uh, there's 12 teams, like I say, coming from Texas, Arkansas, uh, Louisiana. They're coming from all over the United States. So it's, it's a pretty huge deal, but uh, it's big. It's, a, yeah. it's fun to watch these kids. It sounds so. like a neat event and for, for, for Sonic. I guess the, the need for the, the, la, the sound variance next to the apartment complex, I guess, is obviously what would give us pause. Oh. Well, one thing on that, we do have a picture of where, and I don't know if she sent it to you or not. I, I do. I've, I've pulled it up. So the, the tent is actually being placed yes. a little bit off-site. Um, yes. So it's a little bit further away from the apartments than I initially um, thought it was if, um, if our uh, city TV folks can maybe pull up that image. Here you go. Um, is that visible to everybody? Is that a parking lot now? Is that a, or is that? Yeah, it's like it's an empty pad right next to the neighborhood market. The, the Walmart? Right. Yes. Okay. But you still think the sound variance would be necessary noise along I, those apartments? I, I still, yeah, I still think uh, just to to keep them legal, um, it would be a good idea. And, and these you. events are going to occur on site? Yes. Okay. Yes. That what they'll do is they'll keep 10 teams back on this tent location and two teams at a time will go in the restaurant and compete. Okay. So the competition actually is at this site, is what you're saying? Correct. Is that for Oh, yes. okay. Yes. You won't want to know what I thought, so until I... <laughs> I thought you were just having a celebration and all this stuff competition oh, no. was going on somewhere else. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm like, sorry. We're having a big party. After we're, we're, we're actually <laughs> shutting down the drive-in as far as business. For two yeah. days. Two days. Okay. To, uh, yes. to do this. It's all right. Deal. But the, uh, 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 the radio and, and the speakers and all, actually it's going to be at this tent At that side, tent side. Not on our side. Which so is farther is away. Further away. So it's that the other pe persons can hear... The, I. Yeah, it's almost like a live broadcast. Cause see, when you say Sonic Radio, that's what actually comes out on every at every drive-in okay. across the nation is Sonic Radio. Uh, okay. Right. And so that it's just like a live event. For Sonic I see. Radio. And they'll have some music play. Okay. Um, but also they are going to monitor. I didn't even know what the decibel. What is the decibel? Yeah, I was deal? hoping you would tell me. They're, I don't know. Um, well, it says well, they're, that, 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 that they're going to be between 50 and 75, right. and they're going to monitor it. So I thought yes. with their conversation with y'all that that was within the range. No, That's so the, the cap is 50. It's so any, okay. anything over 50 is considered excess. Okay. okay. Whatever y'all want to do, you tell us what to do. Yeah. We'll cap it at 50 or whatever you'd like to do. Well, he wouldn't have Just to so have we can have it. <laughs> so this is two days, right? Yes, ma'am. It'll be days. all day Sunday and pretty much half a day Monday. From what time to what time? 
from 7 till, I think we're doing it from 7 to 6 on Sunday. Something like that. And then 7 to 3.30 on Monday. Right. Yes. So, so the music is not, it, it, it's not important to what's going on inside the drive-in. So we can, we can wrap that thing up. That's just to keep them amped up and make them excited. Yeah, it seemed like a neat team building sort of thing for it Sonic. Is. I would have a tough time, me personally, seven in the morning, either one with the apartment's kind of a worst case, I guess, as far as a noise right. variance for me right. there. So, um, gotcha. I understand. I, quickly, I, I just want to point out, this was, this was referred, uh, they, they were referred by the police department to go, go ahead and go through this process so that, sure. um, so that just in case. Right, uh, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a problem with it since it's just a couple of days, you know, actually. So, sorry, wheel spin. I might have jumped on somebody. The you mentioned you're, you're going to be monitoring it while you're there, at, yes. or yes. have yes. sound equipment. I mean, I'm, I'm yes. sure the, it's some fancy equipment. The radio station will be monitoring it to make sure we do not go okay over the decibels allowed. To, to go over the 75, 50 to 75. 50 to 75. That's why I was saying I didn't know what the limit was. Okay, y'all set it, and we'll and make sure we'll it don't go over that. Yes. So if, if it was set at 50, then they wouldn't need the second variance either, correct? Uh, I, mm -hmm. I believe that if they could keep it at 50 or below, they probably would not need, I don't know that they would need any of these. Well, um, I guess they would need three because it just says you have sound application mm -hmm. devices. You know. To be plainly audible. Is that yeah. 50 again on the right Or is that 50 decibels? That may not be not. Uh, you know that one um, may not actually have a particular number attached right. to it. It's plain. It's just pl plainly right. audible, which makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Well, from a layman's, I mean, what's the difference in 50 decibels? What is 50 decibels? What does that sound like? And what does 70? We got a, I mean, We actually have something on this on my emails. It says 50, 50 decibels sounds like light traffic or a refrigerator. 75 decibels sounds like a toilet flushing or a vacuum plant. Now, this isn't me. Yeah, this I don't is know this. That. Right. So I don't want to sound like. This is from the ones you've been talking to. So I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah. It, that reminds me of when I was not, shopping not, for dishwashers. Here we go. 90 to 95 is a food processor or llama. And we're talking 50 to 75. <laughs> I remember a few years ago, we had a big deal about sound at a church, and right. we went through so much stuff, and I kind of understood, you know. It was way louder than this, I can tell you that, according to what they came up with. Right. Really close. So I, mm -hmm. I remember the application. It was mm -hmm. somebody's home downtown area. Right. Uh, Let me ask you this. Would changing it to 8 o'clock, does that kill you, or you really need it to start at 7? A.M. I'm talking about. Okay, is that 8 o'clock with up to 75 decibels? <laughs> well, I mean, it's just the whole, you know, it's kind of what Davis was saying. As far as that early in the morning? Yeah. I don't, I, that's why I say, y'all tell us. Okay. We'll go back and say, this is what we have. I mean, right. that would, that's I my it. only hesitation is, I no, wouldn't, even if I, I couldn't hear it, why would I want to hear that at right. 7 o'clock in the and morning? I'm, and I'm thinking, what's an hour? Yeah. I, know I just didn't know if y'all were set, this sonic thing was set and something was going on that it had to start at 7 a.m. Well, it, yeah, would, a, I mean, this, it wouldn't, it, I guess we wouldn't be keeping them from starting at 7. They just right. wouldn't I amplify their sound until 8 o'clock. Right, yeah. just wouldn't have a sound. Yeah. Because right. yeah. yeah. I know we're going to start setting up at 5 in the morning. And then it'll, yeah. competition starts at 7. Okay. So. But you're saying no sound, it's no sound till 8. That's, that's awesome. Right, and actually, I think if you kept it below 50, you wouldn't really need to be here at all because you could do 50 starting at 6 o'clock. Right. Uh, and if, if we uh, recommend that uh, you wait till 8 o'clock to start to go up to uh, 75, to 75. You know, but you could crank it a bit at eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. That's probably okay. that's yeah. a reasonable time. Section, sounds to me like that, that what about section three? What about section three? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah, we'd still need to approve. Yeah, I think you're right. I think we'd still need to approve yeah. section three. Uh, and what was that again? Just to I'm have projecting onto the public right of way. I don't know that it has the same. I'm going on Mr. Anthony's 
relaying of the noise ordinance, but that's uh, that's a bad idea. <laughs> well, could we approve? Could we make a motion to approve two and three between the hours of eight a.m. and seven p.m. as stated, and 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 and, and up to seventy-five decibels? Mm -hmm. Can would that not make y'all happy? Yeah, yes, that'd be and awesome. That make, I think I think 8 a.m. would be good. Our, our primary concern is just uh, the earlier you go, obviously, the more calls the police department's going to have to take, and so the 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 later we can go, the better. Eight o'clock seems reasonable. Now, is that for Sunday and Monday, or just for Sunday on the eight o'clock? Since Monday's work and school day, just asking. I'm eight o'clock. I'm good with both. I'm just asking. I would I'd say both. I'd both. say both yeah, days. Right. Okay. Right there with so many people that could be. Sunday was the main concern. Okay. Is that your motion? That would be my motion. For for well, we'd have to we have to do them okay. separately. I understand. We? We for to, number two. For number two. For number two. We yeah. feel like number one is is doesn't They've apply. Removed right. number one, so yeah. uh, and which initially was giving me pause, but uh, yeah. So uh, yes, I would move in for uh, to approve section two. Uh, for between the hours of 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. for both days, uh, with sound not to uh, rise above 75 decibels. Second that motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that piece has been approved. Uh, next, we'll deal with the. I'll make a motion we uh, approve number three with the same. Uh, limitations is the previous motion. Second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion on that? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none. Thank God very much. Have fun at your Olympics. Almost. We have uh, some staff reports and other business. Can I step yeah. up here one moment? Yeah. <laughs> sure. I, if I had given it out before, it would have been a while. Oh, you should have done that because we didn't have it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I ran down to my car and saw Thank you all very much. I really enjoy working with the new crew. Thank you. Appreciate that. Anything else? <laughs> we will adjourn meeting number two.